And the OIG's mission is to prevent and detect fraud, waste, and abuse, and to promote efficient and effective government. And our focus is public safety. The reason that's our focus is because we have a terrible problem here in, in the form of homicides. We're not alone in that. It's a national problem. Uh, uh, however, here it's more severe, far more severe than anywhere else. The crux of the effort to reinvent the Orleans criminal justice system is to create a more fair and efficient administration of justice, thereby making streets safer by sharpening the focus on violent crime. Municipal and traffic courts are part of the Orleans Parish criminal justice system and actually contribute to the funding of agencies that orbit in the system through collection and disbursement of fines and fees on convictions and guilty pleas and also bond forfeitures. That's where the Inspector General comes in. In 2011, the OIG issued two reports detailing findings of deficiencies in court operations and in fines and fee collections and disbursement. Both courts misdirected money into their judicial expense funds. Uh, the traffic court did it to the tune of $1.8 million, and, and this money should have gone to the indigent defenders, the crime stoppers, and the district attorney's office. Uh, so, but they put that money in there instead. When they don't collect the money for all of the money, then it means those organizations are going to get less. Both courts responded to the findings and recommendations offered by the OIG, either defending their procedures or agreeing to make changes. When we first started looking at this and, and, and we reviewed the municipal court, we found, that, you know, the, uh, they weren't following the, the, the law. The law had some archaic features to it, but the law contained the controls. And what they did with an informal agreement with somebody in some administration long ago was to agree to ignore the law and uh, in a way that eliminated all the controls. We actually have gone to the legislature to have that changed. Now the city ordinance still remains. Municipal Court Chief Judge Desiree Charbonnet says the court took action to comply with the Inspector General's accounting recommendations. It required the municipal court to turn over the monies at the end of the day to the city of the Department of Finance on a daily basis. So over time, my understanding and appreciation is that um, it was a tacit agreement between the city and the court that listen, you'll just keep the money and at the end of the day, at the end of the year, we'll split whatever funds are left over. You guys use that money to operate. And it's worked pretty well um, up to the point that the IG realized that that didn't really conform with the law as it was written in the city ordinance. Um, so we still, we, we don't do it that way. What we did is we went to the legislature and now we have a law that allows us every uh, month, at the end of the month, to submit the funds to the city of New Orleans. Quadrivo says he's pleased with developments at municipal court, but he calls for more significant change in the city court system. The municipal court has one administrative judge who's responsible for running uh, the organization, and three uh, other judges, all of them um, work half days. There are four judges, but there are only two courtrooms, so they split. But each judge has a retinue of personal staff. But at municipal court, when you use the judicial workload standards and look at the number of cases that they were handling, they were short a judge, so they, they need a judge. But he says staff could be consolidated. Charbonnet doesn't totally agree, noting that municipal court's caseload has increased now that it handles state misdemeanors as well as municipal violations. We're really busy. We're extremely busy since we received all those cases. We received 40% of criminal court's caseload, which amounts to, by the end of this year, municipal court will have dealt with at least 80% of all of NOPD's arrests and summonses. Um, that's huge for a court that was simply dealing with just municipal ordinance violations before. Quadrivo wants to go one step further. You go to traffic court, it's entirely the opposite. They don't even need a full-time judge. They don't do trials. If they were making great determinations you know, as a result of the deliberation, that would be one thing. But all they're doing, all they're doing is processing a piece of paper. In his reports, the Inspector General has recommended merging the two courts. He says it would save two and a half million dollars annually. Perhaps that was too, too grand a term because people think, wow, that's, you know, that's a lot of moving pieces and it's not. We just need to close the traffic court and give the municipal court another judge. That's all we need to do. 
an idea supported by Metropolitan Crime Commission President Rafael Goenechi. All the traffic in municipal courts, there are eight judges over there. But each of those eight judges only works half a day. So effectively, you have eight judges that you're paying. They're independent staffs that support those eight sections of court. And the judges only work in a half a day, and so are their staffs. Why not have four or five full-time judges uh, and have full-time staffs that are processing not just the misdemeanor cases, but the traffic cases as well? We are here to serve the public, and I think whatever, whatever serves the public best. If it's more efficient that way, um, and I think you know, I also think that if the representatives of the state and the city see fit to do that, I don't know that we have a choice at some point. We don't determine that. In its 2011 response to the merger proposal, Traffic Court took no position deferring that decision to the state Supreme Court and the legislature. Meanwhile, the issue of fines and fees claimed owed by Traffic Court to the Orleans indigent defenders is in litigation.